G'day, Michael here. I've developed a utility for converting STL files into 2D views um, and stored as a DXF file. So I've called it STL to DXF, very imaginatively. Anyway, so it allows you to then uh, use the 2D file in like a CAD program or any other vector editing program that will import a DXF file. So you can pick dimensions off it, or maybe uh, you know, even just use it as artwork as a base of something else, or whatever purpose you have. Anyway, STL to DXF can be set up in such a way uh, it's a single click to launch the process and the file is spat out with a dedicated extension on the name. Well, I'll show you how it works. I found myself in need of creating a promotional material from STL models. So here's an example of a shroud that I make. And obviously customers have got the questions about how big everything is. And so OpenSCAD doesn't directly create dimensions, but it makes the designs very, very cleverly. So you're creating from parameters. Uh, so you design one shape and you can tweak uh, the design heavily just with a few parameter changes. All right, so I've got this model and I needed to create some sort of promotional material, but uh, you can see behind that, you've got dimensions and you've kind of got these transparent views of the triangles. All right, so how, how do we achieve that? I have the utility for sale on the website for Linux and Windows already. Um, now this is the file as if it was downloaded from my website. We'll go into home directory, this C drive, users, Michael, and we'll create a new folder called opt. OPT. Right. In that folder, opt. So we've got our archive on our download folder. We click on that, it extracts it, or well, it just kind of opens it up. What we need critically is just that folder there, dragged across into that opt folder on our user's own uh, folder. All right, so what have we got when we click into that folder? We've got the executable and a couple of file uh, folders here, right? Now I've got some 3D files here. They're to be used with Open and SCAD. Um, you can see there's a torture test there and this is another file. Right. In the STL folder, we've got a test file. Right. Now that's an STL file. So just to, to employ the, the um, utility, we just go right click, uh, open with. We've got to choose another app. Always use this app. More apps, it's a bit long-winded. Um, look for another app on the PC. All we've got to do is go back to our, we've got it in the shortcuts now, STL to DXF, STL to DXF, win. Okay, so I'll click on that. And bang, that's basically now configured to just load on the click. So the process of converting an STL file is now a click. Uh, now just, well, let's have a look at what we've just created. It's used the same name as the original, so it's whatever the name is, .stl underscore ortho underscore con, think, think shorthand for convert, so it's an orthographic conversion of the original STL. Right, so you know there's a different file altogether. If you need to keep this file, you, like you edit it and you need to keep it, you need to rename it, because the next time you click on the STL file, the utility will launch and it'll disregard anything it's created before. So if you need to keep what you've created, rename it, and then the utility will leave it alone. It's only real alert there. Now let's see what we've created. And so that was what we've created. And what the original was is this guy. Um, so that's basically the front view, the top view, and the left end. That corresponds, that corresponds to that. The top view, front view, left view. So it's that simple. So just by clicking on the STL file that you saw a second ago, we get these views. Now if I want to dimension that up, let's get the dimension tool. <clears throat> and I might just edit the preferences so it's a little bit easier to see our dimensions. All these things are great printed, but when you see them on the screen, they're a little bit harder. So I'm just, I'm just gonna make that say six millimeters, okay. And and maybe 
just go ahead like that. And you might uh, right click. You might put some uh, vertical dimension. Okay, so going back to our original OpenSCAD file, what we can do with that also is to export a 3D view. So maybe we'll do that. Uh, export an image. That'll do. Okay, so let's add an image. Okay. I'm going to set that size to, I don't know, about 100. Pop it about maybe there. And then let's have a print preview. Landscape. Get to page. I might just zoom out a tad, so uh, maybe that bit about 0.85, perhaps. Okay. Come out of that. Center it. Okay, so there we have that. And obviously we can add some text or whatever. So that, that basically now has given us something to manipulate in the 2D CAD program. So that, that's worked rather well. Now when you've got a design like this guy, that's actually producing a lot, I mean a lot of segments. So I might actually try that with the utility to see what we get. So if I double click, it should launch the utility. This one takes a bit longer because there are 30,000 triangles, 90,000 vertexes. There's quite a bit of information right here. I mean, the program should stay open for 10 seconds after it produces the last file. So there's a little bit of information here. You can read this. <coughs> you can read this as it runs. Um, you can see the, the field size, the volume size, the number of triangles that went in, the number of points or vertexes where, where you have things coming together. There's 90,000, so there's quite a few there. And it says here that will terminate shortly, but it's produced 36,986 lines in the 2D file. So now let's just open that with um, QCAD. So I'll double click on that. QCAD should load any second now. I might get this out the road. All right, so that's what it's created. Now, we started with 90,000 points and finished with 36,000 lines. So it gives you an idea how much it's cleaned up. So let's go select all. But you can see that the CAD program is going to start getting quite slow once you get this number of points. So that's saying 36,986. If we zoom in, you can see exactly what what's going on with all these points. As we zoom in, you can see there's squillions of little triangles here. So it's doing quite a bit of work to clean up that mess uh, so as to minimize the amount of uh, junk you've got in the 2D file. So that's actually what takes the time. The conversion's actually like you know, a second and it's all done. But cleaning up the file, it has to compare every line to every other line to make sure you know, there's no duplicates. So that's what keeps it busy. So larger files get you know, more and more difficult. The Windows version can handle about twice this complexity, uh, but it cannot handle a file like this guy. And so when that's all said and done, we end up with this kind of thing. So here we have the Millennium Falcon. I've loaded this on the Lin Linux environment using the Linux system. So I'll go uh, select all. You can see here there are 398,930 lines in this Millennium Falcon 3 views. So there's a lot of segments. Unfortunately, I was unable to make the Windows version open that larger file. So it's a fairly complex file. If you need to get those sorts of files um, open on a regular basis uh, and you want to use my utility, a way you could run it on Windows is using a Windows subsystem for, for Linux. It'll allow you to do that kind of thing by using the Linux utility. I'll just put that out there. Uh, for most common jobs, that won't be a situation, but if you're doing things like landscapes, of, you know, game, you know, game models and things like that, and you need to get dimensions out of it, 
uh, it might be worthwhile to use the Linux version. Uh, the, I have a Mac OS version coming as well. It can also handle the same large file numbers. The file capacity should be adequate for like 99% of the jobs. I'll put a link in the description to where to buy this, this utility if you want. It's only going to be selling for $14. I'll probably be posting new tips and tricks in you know this, this same playlist in the future. Feel free to like, share, subscribe, ask a question, leave a comment. Bye for now.